Hey everyone, it's Laisha, and this is my mom, Lavanya. Hi. And this is our segment called Righteous Resolve. And basically, we want to bring you into our living room, into some of the conversations that I've grown up having with my parents at the dinner table about what it means to live as a Christian, what it means to live righteously and holy. So we just welcome you guys. Hello, welcome. We've done this um, a couple weeks mm -hmm. on Instagram, and we realized that it may have a broader reach if we go to Facebook. So, hi, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Thank you um, for those who are tuning in right now. Thank you. Hello. You know, we're really excited because, you know, one of the things we've realized is that right now, today's culture, uh, whether it's on TV, uh, whether it's in music, even the way people live... Um, you know, they're bold about what they believe. Right, exactly. And so just thinking about a scripture uh, that says in Psalm 28 and 1 that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time that as Christians we become bold about what we believe. You know, it's easy to complain about what's not going right in the culture. It's mm -hmm. easy to shout out loud to the newscast um, <laughs> when you're watching it. But I mean, it's another thing to say, you know what, this is what I believe, and not just because it's my opinion, but because this is what, what the Word of God says. Right, and the Word also says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And sometimes, in my personal walk, it's easier to be really bold about the things that I do believe in church because there is a consensus. It's likely that everyone sitting in that congregation is am amening and shouting and being bold about what they believe. But when it comes time to take it outside of the four walls of the church, that's honestly when your faith is activated. That's when you're being a Christian, not that you aren't a Christian, but you're getting charged up to go into the world and to be an example. And um, a, a guest speaker at our church really ignited this thought in me, like, who are you? Who yeah. are you? And that's really important to consider, like, who are you? Are you one person at church? Are you one person in your workplace with your friends, wherever you go, at, at your university, at your school? So today we kind of want to go over um, what it means to acknowledge God in all of our ways and what equipment he has given us and how we apply that in our daily lives. Um, like we said before, we've kind of been doing this conversation on Instagram. And for those of you who are migrating over from Instagram, thanks for being loyal. Yeah. Um, but we talked about Ephesians 6 and putting on the whole armor of God. Because the one reason why it's sometimes super difficult to go and be your Christian self in the world is because... It gets hard. It's not easy. No, I'm not sitting not here easy. talking like, oh yeah, it's so easy to just be like, Jesus, 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 all over the place. It's not. But in Ephesians 6, God has equipped us with the right things to make that walk easy. He's given us supplies or the armor of God. And in Ephesians chapter 6, um, starting in verse 10, the word says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Then it goes on to say, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against high powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Uh, let's see. Um, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, take on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand the evil day and how many of you can agree that there is a lot of nonsense going on in this day and time mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to take us out we don't have to worry about not being adequately equipped um, so take on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand so the first element of this armor that the Word of God talks about in verse 14 is having um, the belt of truth around you and making sure that even though there's all this fake news and there's all these lies going on, maybe in your personal life there are things that aren't true, that you keep yourself surrounded, encompassed with truth so that you can, you know, 
be able to move forward in what's reality because if we're not dealing in reality then we're not dealing in the truth if we're not understanding what god says about certain things there are elements of this culture that are promoting them as fact as this is the way to live this is the way to be is that true if it doesn't line up with the word of god that's not true so make sure you're surrounding yourself with truth you know the truth really jesus said it best in john chapter 8 he said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, um, and the truth is found in God's word. And mm -hmm. so when we deviate for the, from the word and make it seem as if we can develop our own standards, um, really we are not acknowledging the truth. For exactly. instance, what does God's word say about um, premarital, premarital sex, for instance? Right. If we don't take his word that says... Um, you know, marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers will be judged. If we don't take that as truth, then we'll just decide, oh, I can sleep around, or I can sleep with my boyfriend. We love each other. Um, he's the only person um, I'm sleeping with, so really, you know, I'm not like the rest of the girls who are out there with three or four guys, um, you know, maybe in a certain amount of time. If we develop, if we adjust the truth of God's word. Try to. Try to you adjust. You really it. can't. But in our own mind, right? We imagine we can adjust the truth of God's word and make it our own standard. We're truly not acknowledging him in all our ways. And that's where a lot of confusion comes in with people. They're confused because they're not acknowledging the truth. And even I think of another scripture where it says, we need to acknowledge God in all of our ways, but also we need to understand that the way we perceive things is not how he perceives, it's true. perceives That's good. things. Like his word is an absolute guide for our lives and that's the standard by which we should be living. So continuing on, and this is a perfect uh, segue, um, in verse 14, so it says, have the belt of truth around you, but also having on the chest plate of righteousness and word, righteousness. yes, righteousness, like living right, rightness, being mm -hmm. right, um, being morally sound. Mm hmm. Exactly. And, um, I, I heard someone, Priscilla Shire, actually, when she came to Omaha, talked about the armor of God and how the chest plate of righteousness is so key because in battle, it covered a soldier's heart, like their vital organs. You know, you can't live without your heart. And when we don't live this life girded up with righteousness, we'll take so many jabs to the heart. And your heart is so precious. That is your um, center of love. So if you're constantly opening yourself up to having all these things, jabs to the heart you'll take that damage and maybe you'll close off to to being lovely closing off to being kind those sort of things but making sure that if we do the things that God has told us to do honestly it's not Christianity is not about all you can't do I think people look at that as like legalism like oh well if you're a Christian you can't do this you can't do that and yeah. sometimes the blessing is in what what you don't do right it's not having yes we have free will yes we have um we can make choices but that doesn't make it right you right. know just because a baby can walk doesn't mean you're gonna let that baby go walk anywhere because right. you know if they just walk off wherever they want they'll walk into the middle of the street and then god knows what will happen to them so you know there's that protection in what we can't do and what we don't you do know, you talked about that when you went down to college in Lincoln. Yeah. And you started seeing what a lot of your friends were going through, um, through just having a very wild lifestyle. So when I remember when I was in college and I chose not to go to parties, I chose not to drink, no one would have really known, right? Right. But a couple of things I said is, number one, I didn't want to... Um, blurry my witness. I didn't want anybody to guess whether I was a Christian or not. Be wondering. But not only that, I had the benefit of not waking up with a hangover. I had the benefit of not worrying if, um, you know, I was pregnant by some guy that with some one night stand. There were benefits to me living holy. Mm -hmm. And I think the world's culture has wrongly framed Christianity and a lot of God's principles as you can't this, you can't that, you can't have any fun. 
Right. Well, are you really having fun when you've had a one night stand with a guy and you feel horrible? Is right. that really well, fun? And no one ever talks about the the side effects. Exactly. Honestly, we talk about yeah, like there are times that certain things are fun and no one's denying the fun in it. Like even the Bible says, Oh yeah, you'll have fun for a while and yeah. then it's not fun anymore because you've incurred all of this damage. All to your these heart. jabs to the heart. Yeah. Because you're not having like have some care for yourself. You know? Exactly. Think think about is it really worth it and you know, do things according to, like, according to the word, but in consideration of your heart and the long-term consequences. You know, another part of that heart, and I sense that, you know, someone's watching today, and it's, the friendships have damaged your heart. Mm -hmm. You've had unloyal friendships, you've given your all, and you're saying, really, I haven't done anything wrong. Why does this keep happening to me? And I really feel that God is saying, it's not so much you've done anything wrong, but out, you know, there's a song that says looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. You can actually have a righteous standard and then begin to look for what you want, a godly principle in a wrong place. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're not going to find a godly man in a bar. I mean, right. you're not going to find true love in a one night stand. And so sometimes you're looking for those relationships that you want to be permanent, you want to be committed, but you're looking for them outside of God's word, mm -hmm. outside of God's will, and then you're wondering why, why it doesn't, doesn't work out <laughs> right. You know, it's no more than if I had a bicycle and both of the tires were flat and I tried to ride off, no one would think that the bike should work. Matter of fact, if I went riding on that bike with flat tires, everybody would say, your tires are flat. Why are you driving this bike? It's the same thing when we try to ride and go about life our own way without the principles of God, framing it, lifting us up, giving us wind. And the momentum we the need. The momentum to go we forward. need to go forward. We're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I just really want, yes, and can I just encourage you to? Sometimes walking rightly and righteously is a lonely road. Yes. Oh, yeah. But the result of it is peace of mind, mm -hmm. self-respect. In, a, in, a, in, in the long run, Psalm 37 and 4 says this, When a man's ways please God, he will give you the desires of your heart. Yep. And that just kind of, so we're talking about having this momentum to move forward, that's the next verse in Ephesians 6, verse 15. It says, and keep your feet prepared with the, the shoes of peace. And basically what that is talking about is having the coverage that you need to walk through this life, there are a lot of bumpy roads in this yeah. life. There's There are treacherous paths that we have to take, sometimes because of our own choices. Yeah. I can tell you I've walked down some roads in my short 20 years that I'm like, oh my gosh. And then some things have just come just because life has a way of bringing storms and tests and trials. Yeah. But I've noticed that in the times that I've tried to do things by myself in my own way, that... It's made the road harder and more painful, but in the times where trials have come just because they've come, and I've relied on what God's word says about, and God's word, I mean, you can talk about it being antiquated, but there's nothing new under the sun, like, yeah, so-and-so, and verse, blah, 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 chapter, blah, 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 blah went blah, through blah. that, <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm going through, it just is... 2017 it still works like it really True. still works um just making sure that i had my chest plate of righteousness on that i had my belt of truth on my shoes of peace that shoes of peace moving forward knowing that i didn't have to figure it out but all i had to do was consult the word and pray to my very real heavenly father and I had my shoes of peace on. And yeah, that storm was really real. But but I was confident and sure that I could move forward and fast. I was presenting to a group of students about the same thing. Where 
the shoes of peace are kind of like real tennis shoes. Your shoes keep you, keep your feet protected from the ground. So gravel, gla glass, hot concrete, that never feels good. But the right shoes will help you run fast. They'll help you mm -hmm. jump high. And that's the same thing with the shoes of peace. Those, they will cover your feet when you're walking down some hard roads in life. Or they'll help you run faster through good roads or just the, the things that we'll do and experience on this life. In so, this life. So, Alicia, how do people get on the right track? You know, you know that's the other thing a lot of times. Condemnation, maybe past mistakes, uh, oftentimes do cause you to feel like, man, I'm so far away yeah. from God. How do I get on the right track? Well, it's like a, I told a lady today, um, you know, who really had strayed away from God. It strayed away from church, and now they were facing a tragedy in their, in their family. I said, God is, it's the reason why they call us heaven, him, him, our heavenly father, mm -hmm. because he is a God of love. Uh, no matter what we've done, no matter how bad it's gotten, God is always there like a heavenly father, like an earthly father, but more supreme, has more love to open his arms to us mm -hmm. and we don't have to be perfect to to come back to him all we have to do is have a willing heart and it really just starts with a simple prayer to say father I'm sorry now I would like to say that after that prayer there needs to be a commitment of next steps what are Absolutely. you going to do don't go you, back and do the exact same no, thing. no but you mm -hmm. it's hard not to when you haven't given yourself the strength through right friendships mm -hmm. through a good church home i surrounding yourself in truth surrounding mm -hmm. yourself in truth it's like when you start to lose weight the mm -hmm. gym helps to what facilitate mm -hmm. that environment that mindset you know healthy. the healthy mindset it's the same thing with spiritual things and walking with god he loves you mm -hmm. you know and i even sense that some of it is for someone watching, it's like, you know, but my church doesn't speak to me. God is so real. Find a church that is speaking to you and is encouraging you to, to walk right. And is encouraging you in the truth of God's word. Yes. But don't just rely on that. I personally go to a great church, but in, in the times that I needed the word of God from my personal walk, it wasn't, now I had good resource to go back to and people praying for me and encouraging me, but it wasn't sitting in that place with those people under that pastor alone that got me through those tough times. It was consulting the word of God and praying and talking to my heavenly father in real time, like, yeah. God, this is going on right now. And I'm walking through it, not anyone else it's in my true. family, as supportive as they are, not anyone in my friend group, not anyone at my university, my church. I'm walking through this, yeah. and I need you so much right now. Mm -hmm. And that is what pulled me out of those depths in key times. And I just encourage you to just really believe it and understand it as truth because that's that's what pulls us through right. it's so crucial you know i think Leisha, we want to pray there's people that For are sure. some new beginnings um new beginnings in a school year new jobs new opportunities and you're saying okay i don't know where to begin and i don't want it to be the way it used to be start by praying and being honest with god maybe mm -hmm. you've gotten with the wrong friends maybe you've you found yourself in wrong relationships you know um, God is able to get your life mm -hmm. back on track. It's probably the reason why you're listening to us mm -hmm. tonight. And I'd encourage you, sorry. And another thing is, um, even if you have gone through some things, first of all, don't compare yourself to anyone else yeah. because measure yourself against yourself. Measure yourself against the word of God. That's your absolute truthful measuring stick. Yeah. But also know that there is no condemnation for those of us who have submitted yeah. ourselves to Christ. And when you when you say, you know, Father, I've done all these things, help me, forgive me, 
it's nailed to that cross. Mm-hmm. It already was, yeah. but the fact that you're coming to him and acknowledging it, it's been washed away. Yeah. And when God, when you go to God and ask him, because he's so merciful and so gracious to us, when you go to him and surrender your life, your mind, your will and emotions, then the word says he casts those things as far as the east is it's from so the true. west. I think that word surrender though is so key. Oh yeah. It's because important. if we're holding on and again trying to direct it our own way or saying, you know, well, I'll take a little bit of God, but I still want to keep my nope, sin nope, issue nope, on nope, the nope, side, nope, nope. it doesn't really work. We really do have to acknowledge him in all of our ways. Then that's where that guidance comes. That's when the confusion breaks. Amen. Yeah. That's when the peace comes. That's when the anxiety breaks. You know, when I see Christians that are constantly battling anxiety, you're not acknowledging God in all your ways. There's somewhere that you're allowing the worldliness or the enemy to tr- torment you. Trust God's word. Like you said, it's not some antiquated book. Oh, no. To it's be, very real. you know, <laughs> it, it's lively. Tried and true. Um, I always say everybody has a Bible these days. It's it's called Google. Um, <laughs> you can Google God's word for any situation. However, what, physical printed Bibles do exist, and you should get one of those. It's too. true. <laughs> but if you don't have one, Google it. It's what does free. God's word say about peace? What does God's word say about my boyfriend? <laughs> hey, yeah. The word boyfriend's not in the Bible. Uh, it's really not, <laughs> it's though. really not, though. But anyway... <laughs> Acknowledge God in all your ways. Mm -hmm. He will direct your path. Start by reading your Bible. Start by praying. Start by finding a good church. Uh, Getting around Christian friends is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. You want to pray for the people? Absolutely. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for those who have tuned in to this Facebook Live session. Lord, you know their circumstances and you see where they're at at this very moment. You know the condition of their heart, but you also know the plans that you have for their lives. So we pray that this word would go forward and it would really penetrate those voids in their heart and it would be an activator for change in their lives. And we call them blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I just want to speak to a spirit of fear. I just feel that there is a spirit of fear fear that's tormented you and God wants to break it and he really wants to bring peace and so right now just come against that spirit of fear the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and so you be at peace you be at peace in Jesus name amen well, thank you so much for those of you who I always have fun in. doing this. Like oh, that. I absolutely love it too. And this is our new platform. We'll be on Facebook Live Saturday. We'll try to be 730, but catch us when you see us. Um, definitely engage in conversation. Like our, our post. Um, comment if you, if you really um, in, enjoyed or had a comment that really helped you. Um, and send us topics. Yeah, We'd love topics. to hear We've from you. We talked about pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. We talked about everything. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, a lot of things we've walked through and mm-hmm. it really represents our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. For sure. And, um, so we we're excited to, to do this again. See ya. Bye.